The way I kind of distinguish it from the other three is it's really kind of prickly compared to like the Doug fir, which is a lot softer. Um, we have the cedar. Um, the younger sprouts are a little flatter. You can see the leaves on them are kind of scaly. Um, these two probably grow up to be about 150 feet high. Um, we have the hemlock. It's kind of a flatter branch. Um, the needles on it, the easiest way to identify this is underneath the needles, there's two white stripes. And they become a little more prominent as the tree gets older. But it's a real easy way to distinguish a hemlock. And then we have the Doug fir, which looks a lot like the spruce, but the needles have a kind of a rounded point to them, and it's pretty soft. Those grow up to about 200 feet. And we have a lot of the Doug fir trees up in the higher elevations right. of the trail because they like drier soils, whereas exactly. the western red cedars like real wet environments, so those are down lower. So to plant these, we're going to start off by digging a hole about two to three times the size of the root ball, which is this portion of the tree here. Um, some of the pots, some of the roots are kind of root bound in there. They, it's pretty common for a container pot or tree or plant to become root bound in the pots. They all should slide off fairly easy, but if they don't, go ahead and just, sometimes you can put them on the ground and just give it a, just a gentle roll and then just hold it gently down there and give it a small tap. This one's not too bad. You can see all the roots on the side. Um, the reason why we plant, we dig such a wide hole is when we backfill it with the original soil that we have after we remove all the sticks and rocks is, and I'll show you here a little bit later, we spread these roots out and what that does is allow the roots to grow out into softer soil and establish more quickly and giving it more area to absorb about nutrients and water. The thing that we don't want to do, and probably the most important thing, is we don't want to bury the tree too deeply. So we don't want to dig down too far. We don't want to plant a tree any higher than the root ball itself. Um, most of the absorbing roots on trees are actually in the top part of the root ball. So we don't want to plant it any more than like the top of the root ball here. If we plant it up here, we actually choke the tree off. It can't breathe and, and, it, and it'll actually eventually die. Uh, another thing by planting too much soil up top over the thing is we can actually, these roots, and another reason why we spread the roots out is that if we leave it in here like this and we plant too high, what's called is girdling on a tree, and these roots will actually swirl around the tree up through the soil that we've buried over the root onto the stock, and it'll actually choke the tree, the tr tree will actually choke itself out and become weak and branches could die and eventually probably even kill the tree. So we don't want to go any more higher than the root ball itself. You can see here it's pretty shallow, and that's completely okay. That's the most important thing with planting a tree is not too deeply. So you can see we got a wide area here. Um, we'll go ahead and backfill it. You start off with a round towards the bottom. You know we don't want to. We want to get out all the rocks. This nice aerated, cultivated soil is what we'll be putting back in. And there's gloves over there too, if you'd like. I'd recommend them because you may be getting into uh, little trailing blackberries. You do have thorns. And there's some nettles down there too. Go ahead and pack the base down a little bit, and that will just establish that the tree is going to be good and solid. We've got one step actually. First, actually, we're going to just gently kind of loosen up these roots. We're actually looking just to spread these roots out a little bit. Some of them are going to be a little bit bigger. The ones that have been in the pots a little bit longer, they'll be a little bit larger. We're just loosening them up, giving them a chance to spread out so they can actually go out into this nice soil that we have. just going to work this soil in around the plants. Another thing we, we're not looking to do is we don't want to backfill this too tightly. Um, we want to work it in and just lightly. We don't want to push too hard. 
We don't want to compact the soil. A common mistake is a lot of people will actually use their feet. And basically what we're doing is basically creating soil around the tree like we just dug out. So we want to keep it somewhat light and airy. Roughly about two times, three of these is about the width of the hole, the diameter of the holes is a good, good approximation. Another thing is we brought um, some water if you feel like staying later and uh, for the heart of your souls, um, bringing some buckets, small buckets of water down to put a little water around each tree after we're done today. So we're going to do that as well if you'd like. Again, you can kind of see the top of the roof off. Uh, a lot of trees that come in containers actually have too much dirt in them. Um, these ones aren't too bad. You can kind of see, it's hard to tell on a small tree, but the trunk flare on a tree, you can see like here, it spreads out at the bottom into the roots. It's hard on young trees, but that's where the roots start. And a lot of nurseries actually pack too much dirt in there. These ones aren't really good actually. So just to the top of the roof ball, then ideally you want to water these in, the water will compact the soil, it'll make the soil settle and, and bring the dirt all around the roots and get out all those air pockets. Air pockets will actually dry the roots out, so it's important to do that. Um, like he said, we do have water and buckets for anybody that wants to water fall their trees. Fall is the ideal time to landscape or plant trees as well because it lets the tree roots adjust to the temperatures before the winter sets in. Yeah, a lot of times if you plant a tree in May or June, it gets so hot in July and August that they have trouble surviving that, that summer without a lot of water. So this gives the maximum uh, survival likelihood planting right now. Um, next summer, when it gets real hot, we may come down here with a few watering cans and check out these trees. And if you'd like to help in that process, you know, send me an email or 